this week on Pole House Black Pot Weekend Getaways, we're off to a car show! In Kansas! On the menu! 1920s recipe from Henry Ford Cookbook. It's oatmeal scones. It's for our Ford Model T. So stick around! This is Wade, and I'm Angel, and this is Iris, and we are Pole House... Black Pots Weekend Getaways, where we show you all things yummy to cook in cast iron as we visit different places. Welcome to Poe House Black Pot Weekend Getaways, or welcome back if you've been watching us. Uh, this week we did something a little different. As you saw, we headed to Kansas. To a nice big yeah vintage car show yeah it was a great one and uh we're also doing something else special well the, on menu we What's thought that? well we thought we'd have since we have a 1926 model ford model t that we do something from a ford cookbook it's actually a scone not like what you get in britain it doesn't have a whole bunch of it was yeah of like butter in it. It's got a little bit, but it's got oatmeal in it. So we're going to get things around and we're going to show you in the car show. Let's talk about that quick minute. We got there. We knew something bad was going to happen, didn't well, we? Well, we knew there was a forecast for something bad. Yeah, well, it hit. It happened. <laughs> we couldn't cook out if we'd wanted to. No. We wound up with at least two inches of rain in the bottom of our tent. We went rather sparingly because we knew we weren't going to be at camp a whole lot. And no. Cooking out would not be a good deal. So we'd always planned on coming home and yeah. cooking. But we wound up only spending one day at the show, which was bad. But well, yeah. how many inches of rain did we have here? I don't know. We had three inches here that, so, that, that night, same night. It almost. was a great show, and we're going to show you even our cruise that we yeah so it ended up kind of being an abrupt end because we didn't get to do yeah. day two the sunday but it was still a good time we so. came home it rained all the way home we chased the rain here yeah the whole way here so we'll be back in just a minute and we'll show you how we made these It's middle of the afternoon, Friday afternoon, and we have arrived at, this is site 58 at Pendale Point. We're at Hillsdale State Park. We're only about what, Angel, about 40 miles southwest of Kansas City. Yeah. And this is about as close as we could get to where we're going to be staying. I mean, to where we're going to be going to the... Oh, excuse me. Iris says hi. Say hi. Yeah. So, it's rather hot, she says. Hold on, Iris. So we're over here under the only little shade tree that we've got. And this is a pretty nice campsite. And we've got our regular amenities. And since we hold the Model T, we have no way to pull our camper. So... We're going back to old school for this weekend, and we got out our TP tent. So, you probably can't see it from here, but you kind of go, we can make a loop around, maybe it'll show it to you. On around the loop, right over there is, what, Hillsdale Lake, right? Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a pretty good, it's got like five, six different areas of camps, grounds throughout the state park. So, this is probably the furthest one back. We're not very far, right up across the little road and right up over there is the restroom, shower house, and laundry facilities. So the only bad thing about uh, Kansas State Parks is your reservation is all like normal online, but you have to pay $5 per night for a vehicle pass. 
So at least with the Missouri State Parks, you can get in and out of there for free. But to go do anything inside these state parks in Illinois, like a lot of other states, you have to pay $5 a day. Or I think you can get multiple day pass for a lot less money. So we're about packed, unpacked enough for now. We're getting ready to head. We got to go about 30 miles straight west to Ottawa, Kansas. And that's where we're going to go here in a minute and get set up, registered for the car show. So we'll get all that rounded up and we'll meet you there. Okay, we made it to Friday night sign up at the park. And we get over here and get parked and we'll give you a little rundown on a little bit more about the show. There's our registration card. So, this is called the Old Murray, Murray's? I think it's Mary's. We'll put, put it up down on the screen, so if we're wrong, sorry. Uh, Old Mary's River Run Car Show. This is the 37th annual. And we, uh, you could pre-register, and that was, had to be done by the end of August. We didn't do that. And at that time, there were 832 vehicles pre-registered and they have to be 1972 or older no motorcycles no what is it no dune buggies or sand rails so it's all old cars and trucks and then also uh this is just friday afternoon and registration goes clear through tomorrow or just saturday afternoon and we were at up to 970. they said probably there'll be close to at least 1500 probably closer to 2000 vehicles here by the time it's over so it's gonna be a pretty big show, definitely the biggest show we've ever been to. We're just gonna sit back and relax for a little bit and uh, kind of give you a clue later on of what's going on this weekend. Well, it's Saturday morning and we've had a very eventful time so far. Didn't do a whole lot last night. <clears throat> Why? Well, kind of sat around over at the park until it uh, got almost dark and since we don't have real good lights, there's no brake lights yet on the Model T. Oh, Iris says hi. Hi, Iris. I'm saying good morning, baby. Yep. <laughs> Hell of rain and thunderstorms last night, but nothing major. But we got through, luckily, most of the night until then, unluckily, it kind of started raining About in four around the edges. And we got a little damp, so we kind of decided we're going to revamp a little bit. I'm going to, I guess, move to the back of the truck. <laughs> There's not enough room for both of us back there, and then Angel's gonna kind of move over to the center of the teepee tent, where it's got a little bit won't touch the edges and stuff. And then also, since she has room in her cot, is that little tent cot? She set the tent up inside out, so that's kind of <laughs> I rest. And what do we? What'd you have for breakfast, son? We're going simple. We made we made coffee, I didn't of course. I like it very good. I'm not real big on coconut, so. Healthy, uh, Heather's Choice Banana Nut Buckwheat Breakfast. Well, it was supposed to be sold with boiling water. We didn't want to boil water because we made our coffee. And, we have, and then I've got this here, and it's pretty good. Reed Wise Breakfast Sunshine Strawberry Granola Crunch. You just it's add ready cold wise, water. Isn't it? Huh? Ready Wise. Excuse me, yes. Ready Wise adventure meal so this is a bundle of stuff you got wasn't it yeah. had lots of different things in that whole box is. and then we made our good old coffee press pot over there on well that there. one's so. strawberry and i knew it was so i bought this thinking it'd replace that for a meal and because i'm allergic to strawberry yeah so, don't. so we're running a little behind but we wanted to kind of things to dry up a little bit before we get back over to the car show anyway because we're about all the way across town so we got to drive about five good five minutes through town to get to the other side to the, where the park is at so we're going to go ahead and eat a little breakfast and then we'll get headed over there and see you over at the car show
there were a total of 1,338 vintage cars and trucks registered this year, which was down a little bit from years past. This is probably due to the fact of the hot weather. It got up to 95 degrees Saturday afternoon. In addition, there was thunderstorms both Friday and Saturday nights, and then rain again on Sunday. Only registered vehicles were allowed in Forest Park during the days of the show. It was fun being able to park under one of the many shade trees that were provided and watch cars just cruise around the park all day. There were no car or truck awards for this show, but they had lots of drawings on both days for lots of neat items such as a plasma cutter, a portable generator, plus many other smaller items, and they even had a complete ready to drop in Chevy engine. On Saturday evening from 5 to 9, they closed off about 12 city blocks right in downtown Main Street here in Ottawa for only registered vehicles to go cruising. There were so many in the cruise that it took about an hour to make the complete loop. I would have to say that this was definitely one of the largest and one of the best car shows that we have ever attended. Okay, Wade, come on in here. Now this is scalded milk. Now I've already, it's already hot and I put the two tablespoons of butter in there. Scalding originally, I gotta melt my butter in there, was to help pasteurize your milk because back in those days they didn't pasteurize milk. In our respect that this recipe doesn't even really give temperatures or times it is an older recipe, so we went ahead and scalded the milk because we're going to add the milk to a cup of, it said scotch or Irish oats. Well, 
I think it's going to be like instant oats, so that's what we picked was the instant oats. Now we're going to set it aside and let it cool. In here I've got a cup and a half of flour, two tablespoons of sugar, three teaspoons of baking powder, and a little bit of salt. And it had me mix it all together. So when this is cooled to room temperature, which it's still just a wee bit warm, we'll come back and we'll add this dry ingredients to the wet mix. So we'll be right back. All right, now, the reason why I pick quick oats is because the Scottish or Irish oats were quick to plump up, and these have been pretty quick to plump up. This is totally cold. So to this, I'm gonna, and the directions tell you to do it opposite of what I'm doing. I don't think it really matters. Put the dry, wet into the dry. Yes, yeah. then you wind up dirtying two things instead of one. So, I have always done this and it's never hurt anything. I am gonna take my time and putting it in here. I'm not gonna put it in here all at once. Now I'm assuming since we've never fixed this before, that it's going to look a lot like uh, biscuits. Scones kind of do. Mm -hmm. Now, scones have a lot of butter or fat content that this is not going to have. It's got some, though, a little bit a of butter. A little bit of butter. Not a lot, but, does it? No, two tablespoons of butter is all it's got. Ooh, this is getting awful stiff, dear. Hmm, kind of feel like tasting history right now. Maybe we should have tried this recipe out. Looks like there's not enough liquid, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Well, hmm. And you know, I don't think I've ever made scones before. I don't know if you could over mix them. Kind of like a biscuit, probably, so oh. probably don't want to overdo them. Well, I know, but I also don't want to add too much liquid to it. Well, hmm. it's just a wee bit crumbly. Yeah, I would. What do you think? A little vote, oil and milk? My vote would just be more milk. Just more milk? Mm -hmm. Probably. Let me Go get a little more milk. I'll be back. Okay, I've got an, about another quarter of a cup, but I'm not going to put it all in at once. Just a little bit. You know, like always, we try to start off with just the basic recipe and then change it after we've tried it once. Unless we find, and you know the direction said teacup full, two teacup fulls. Well, I figure that's like ours, but maybe it wasn't. That's it's getting looking better. better. Yeah, it is. Cool. All right, I'm gonna flour this board. I had to go clean my hands off because this became a sticky proposition. Now it said to do it about a half an inch thick. And then cut as directed. Well, guess what? There weren't any directions on as how directed. 
Is that about a half inch, you think, honey? I wouldn't go any thinner. Okay. Now, I'm going to cut these in scone shapes, which is usually kind of a triangle, isn't it, dear? Yeah, I cut them in squares and then I cut the square diagonal. It's how I always thought it would probably be the easiest. Well, we are thinking alike. Yep, yeah, good enough. Now, this is the texture of biscuit. I think they usually are kind of close to a biscuit. I'm gonna grab. Actually, I'm coming over there. Okay, let me get the charcoal. We haven't lit the charcoal yet. That's oh, okay. okay. We'll go ahead and get the Dutch oven. Let me spray it real quick, okay? Okay. Probably wouldn't hurt to put a little bit of freaking spray in there. Yeah, we see the frame over there on the other side. I wouldn't get on it. Okay. I'm going to lay these in here. Well, believe it or not, that didn't cut all the way through. Wade suggested using a pizza cutter. I would. together but not touching so they're gonna get crispy edges it's kind of seven hopefully the plan that'll work and eight beautiful now the rest of these directions say bake at a moderate heat which from what I've researched is about 350 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes we're probably still gonna have to do 30 minutes because this is cold this Dutch oven's cold so as soon as Wade gets the briquettes going, we'll get it to baking. Look at that. They're ready, aren't they? Yep, they're ready. Okay. Now, this is a 12 inch shallow Dutch oven, sometimes referred to as a six quart. And for moderate heat, like as I say, it's about 350, maybe 375. <clears throat> so, with our normal bake that we've been usually do with this kind of a biscuit or anything, we're going to do 30 pieces. And that being said, it will be 20 on top and 10 on bottom. Now, as always on the bottom, you never put it in the middle. It'll give you a hot spot. And what will that do? Well, your center ones will be more done. More brown on the bottom. I.E. Probably burnt. Could be burnt. Not necessarily burnt, but could be. More than likely. Yeah. So if you're baking something and it's always burnt in the middle, maybe you ought to look and see how close to the center you're putting in bottom briquettes. Yeah. yeah. And it always takes more on top than the bottom, which doesn't seem logical, but it's true. Well, heat rises. And plus that heat is just leaving on top of the oven or underneath as that heat goes up, it's trapped underneath the bottom of that oven. So basically on top, we just do a simple ring around the outside, usually a solid ring. And then in this case, we're doing about four in the middle, which is kind of like a checkerboard. And we don't have much wind, but doesn't hurt anything. We're gonna go ahead and put the wind guard on. Now we're gonna assume 30 minutes. So we're probably just gonna do a full, we'll probably just do 10 minute rotate, do a second 10 minute, and then 20 minute, we'll just kind of a quick check, make sure we're not getting going to be too brown by the 30 minute mark, and then we'll pay it by the Because it way. does so. say 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah, so. and usually with a biscuit, if you do 15, 20, we usually got a good, little hotter oven than that. So, but we, like I say, the oven was not preheated, like we said earlier, so it's going to take a little bit longer. So, we'll try that. We'll be back. On this channel, we show you yummy, delicious, 
and interesting things to cook in cast iron, most specifically Dutch ovens. Do you know we have a cookbook? It not only shows you great tips how to use your Dutch ovens, but it gives you our first two years of recipes. They're $20 with $6 shipping and handling. You can get those at Pole House Black Pots, P.O. Box 1 or 212, Fat Missouri 65248, or on Venmo. Yes, in the Venmo, look up Pole House Black Pots on Venmo. All right, it's been 20 minutes. <clears throat> Let me see if I can do this one-handed. I'm gonna rotate the uh, Dutch oven first, and then I'm gonna check and see how it's cooking. So, here we go. Okay, now let's rotate the lid. The opposite turn. And let's see here. Okay. They're coming along. Make sure they don't get too done. Come on, pretty good. I don't know. We'll go a few more minutes, but I don't know if we're gonna go the whole ten more minutes. Probably it's five. And we'll see what we get. Okay. I smell it. We went another five minutes was it. So it is the 20 minute mark. Yeah, so we went 25 minutes total without a preheated. Ooh, that's pretty. I think they're good enough, don't you? Do you like it? Yeah, they feel Bottom good. Bottom looks like it's done. Well, I don't know. I think know. I can pick it up quick enough. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can Oh, do it. those are done. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay. He's going to set that down. We're going to break off a piece and try not to. I may get this off. Wow, I'm going to yes. need to cook anymore. Now. Break me off a little piece, honey. Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. <laughs> Give me a lip burner. All right. Okay. A different kind of texture. They're not real. I kind of broke it off. It wasn't real crumbly, even though a lot of times it is. Mmm. That's different. It's sweeter than I thought, but yet not obnoxiously sweet. Well, most of your are, but it wasn't much sugar in it. Uh-uh. Two tablespoons. That ain't bad. Mm, I think we'll fix some again. It's a... It's a good base, mm -hmm. kind of like a biscuit mix. A little different texture because of the oatmeal, which I like. Could you imagine them with blueberries in it? But it would be good. Ooh. We could probably put it. It'd be good for. And you could, you could, you know, put a little, a little sweet glaze of some type would be good mm -hmm. on it. Of some type, you know, you could do that on some scones. Have that. And it would sweeten it up a little bit and make a good dessert. Or you could almost do this with something savory. Yeah. And because it's not overly sweet. Mm -mm. It would be really good. Yeah, I think it's a something different, but really good for a simple old school recipe. That's yeah, it is. not hard to do. Not hard to do at all. Now, I'm going to put the recipe up at the end of this, and I'll put how much milk we put in here. It wasn't all scalded, but I would probably scald all of it. So yeah. that was the only thing we adjusted was the milk. Yeah, just a little bit. You had a little bench flour to kind of well, yeah. work it in, which is... So, not for it. We not kind of. We hope you like this video. If you like this kind of stuff, look at our past videos. But promise not to watch the first one. It was awful. <laughs> we hope you like this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Yeah, which is a like. Share us on Facebook or Instagram. And what else do we need to do? Subscribe. Yeah. Yeah, that helps us out too. So we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. That thing good. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's get it.